Um, so you mentioned something uh, earlier about gem- gender ambiguity, like with the costumes and going through like, mm. the female section for like the male clothes and vice versa. Um, how does gender ambiguity play in this production of Tales of Hoffman? Well, it's really interesting. I was always fascinated by feminism. You know, I grew up, you know, I was born in the 1960s, so I've lived through so m- many different uh, decades of political development which have been to do with people discovering that actually difference was the least important thing uh, and what made us the same was the thing that was going to make us strong for the future. And I feel, and maybe the same way that people have felt of my grandparents' generation, that you know, all of a sudden flight was discovered and you know, people then, it was taken for granted that people had electricity in their homes and then they had toilets in their houses to have to go outside and you could use public transport and that women went to work. And I have always been excited by equality. And I think the reason for that is because I was brought up, first of all, in Israel and then in South Africa places that you wouldn't necessarily immediately associate with equality. And even when I came to live in Britain when I was 17, I was in London, and it was very, very clear to me I'd never lived in such an obviously diverse society, but it was still very clearly divided. And and one of the divisions that I understood fairly early on was the division between what men were allowed to do and what women were permitted to do. And I always found that the whole the whole idea of gender in that respect always reflected back to me about race from the society that I was living in, but also about sexuality and about the people feeling that there was nothing abnormal. I was always brought up to understand that if something caused unwanted pain to another person, that that was really not permissible. But anything else was, and everything else is, because people are so diverse and we understand ourselves and our complexity in a way that has to be sufficiently subjective but also objective with for the society that we live in and i see every bit of work that i do through that filter if you will i don't like to think of it as a filter because it seems artificial and in this rehearsal process i have been particularly interested because i do not prepare before i come to a rehearsal uh, I know this piece well, I've sung it often, but that's not the reason. I'm interested in walking into a rehearsal room. Of course, you need to know the piece well enough, but I want to see what happens when this group of people come together to say something about a scene or an act or a whole, an, entire, an entire opera. And in this instance, it was clear to me this project is led by two strong women mm-hmm. who made this extraordinary thing happen. And they have... Uh, brought a group of people around them that they have already a working relationship with, a relationship based on, on friendships that go from the past and to some of them have been quite recent. I'm I'm a new friend. I've only been in Berlin for a year and I've only I've known Anne Byrne for a longer period of time because I worked with her. I designed her, a costume for her mm. and she was lots of fun to work with and she mentioned that she lived in Berlin and of course when I came here not only did I see Anne Byrne but I saw her social circle of friends and discovered the things that she was doing one of which of course was Opera on Tap which I was very interested by because I love the idea of people standing up and singing um, but the, the idea of doing Hoffman which was Sarah and Anne's which I thought was a bit crazy, I have to tell you. But um, now I, it seems completely appropriate that it would have been silly to have done anything else, you know, to have done, you know, scenes from opera or little kind of, you know, 10, 10 15 minute chamber opera. This is really not what it's about. Uh, and it's always good to bite big, yeah. you know. You may not be able to swallow, but at least, you know, you're giving your teeth a workout, mm-hmm. if that means anything to anybody. Um, and so we did our first run through yesterday. And it was fascinating because of the nature of Hoffman, because we have three Hoffmans. Mm. They were singers in the group who had never seen other scenes because they're just not in the Antonia Act or not in the Olympia yeah. Act. And it was very interesting, as well as watching what was going on ahead of us, to kind of feel the energy from what was happening left and right and everywhere else. And there was one singer in particular who had got to a point where he just laughed because it became very clear <laughs> to him at a certain point in the production that this was about women being completely sexually liberated and open. Even mm. though they were playing oppressed characters, the idea that a woman can be as sexually active, as sexually dominant, as sexually aggressive as a man when she chooses to be, was something which, without even me being entirely conscious about it, is a very strong theme in this production. Yeah. It's about kind of ownership of one's self, ownership of one's difference, and ownership of one's similarity. Mm-hmm. And... Um, 
it was it was something that I managed to discuss with this particular singer afterwards, and it was it was terrific. And he said, you know, it's so un- was so unusual for him because he comes from an audience expectation, also to a certain degree as a performer, of understanding that again men are allowed, women are permitted, mm-hmm. and um, I am very very I'm very interested in gender. I'm very interested in gender because I'm interested in seeing how it it's it's melting. That the idea of, of of anything specific, especially from people, somebody from my background, is uh, is a notion which has to do with kind of controlling society. And for me, it's 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 very very exciting to think that people can be entirely free in expressing who they are. And of course, their sexuality and their sense of gender is a very profound part of it. I have never felt specific to my gender, and so it's very important for me to be able to be in an environment creatively where I can understand myself and my motivations mm-hmm. and realize that they're not weird or strange or even something I would have to apologize for or even worse, not even speak about as mm-hmm. if it's something forbidden. And I think that this opera, strangely enough, because as I say, when I've been part of it before, it's never struck me as strongly, but now it seems to me to be some sort of parable. And because we're playing with the idea of people who have strength and who have power and the people who are subjugated by them and sometimes rebel and, and find themselves or are quashed and never are allowed to find a voice, to me, that seems to me some sort of hymn to freedom, an attempt to find some sort of mm-hmm. equality. Yeah. And it, 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 it seems strange to use the word equality, but um, it's, become a, it's become a profoundly obvious thing that's in the room and that makes the room better. And I'm hoping that we can take an audience on a journey where their expectations are, are not necessarily met, but they're replaced mm-hmm. by something else which seems to be more inclusive and maybe as a, as a result, maybe even more entertaining. Because certainly that's the challenge that we have, is to do whatever we do with a profound, I'm using the word profound a lot, I'm really sorry, but it feels that it has, everything has that depth to it, um, that it means something to the audience in a way that maybe they hadn't expected. Mm-hmm. Because certainly I think that's what happened, has happened as part of the rehearsals we've had and the group of people that we brought together. And it's made, I feel, and I'm not responsible for that, but the group is, it's made everybody a bit smarter Mm -hmm. and maybe a bit kinder. I thank you so much (laughs) for that. Um, And just for myself, um, I I found it very, very liberating to be in this production because it feels very safe um, gender-wise and it feels like, like, I can only speak for myself. Mm. I, I can express myself and I express my gender in whatever way that I feel is right and is comfortable and uh, not only as like a singing actor, but just as a person, as a human mm. being. Um, and I think that will, I think the audience will respond to that in, in not a way where we're, we're bashing gender and feminism against their no, head, in a way where like yes. we've just accepted it and we've run with it, we're sprinting with it and they have to catch up. Yes. <laughs> and I think, I think, you know, if it's actually if it's coated by this extraordinary Offenbach music, it's it it is uh, it's delicious and it's atta- it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. But everything that you bite has substance, and you can give it a bloody good chew. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, working with you has been an extraordinary uh, experience for me because I was concerned about being appropriate mm. and being. I always wanted to be sensitive and all, always respectful. Yeah. But it seemed to me that this idea of being appropriate in the back of my head was absolutely absurd because you you came in and you're so you're so you have such a profound ownership. Sorry to say profound again, Paul. <laughs> but but you have such an ownership of who you are and it's not it's not clear and obvious. Mm-hmm. You know, you have questions and you you have challenges, but I think that that you have brought an energy into a rehearsal room which I've never quite felt before. And I am so excited by it because I feel that I've gone, well, if Holton can be so courageous, 
then we just we go. We 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 all are going to be that open and that playful, and that ambiguous if we choose to be. Um, and that also that nothing has to have a clearly delineated beginning and end, because the fluidity, and it's I think it's a word that's used frequently nowadays, and maybe it's not always it's not clear to, clear to people, and maybe it hasn't been that clear to me. But I feel this experience has made me understand that the bottom line of it all is just humanity. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever whatever choices that you have that you make and you have made and that you, the experiences that you've been through in your life. Um, it is is equal to anybody else's human experience, mm-hmm. and the thing that makes it different is that you've said, "But this is what I want," and I'm not going to apologize to anybody for for, for feeling it. So uh, that's it's such a necessity for this to be uh, the journey of your life, mm-hmm. and I think that everybody who you work with, and maybe it's not been so clear because it's not really been verbalized, mm-hmm. but it's been. Well, it's been inspiring, that's for sure. But I think it's also been very much an education that some of us have not had before, that thing that's been missing from it. And I think the lesson to be learned is that you keep an open mind and you embrace and you celebrate and you... I find it exciting. And uh, and the things that we've done with your character, um, I've been... I've, I'm so delighted with because it's so... It has a, a comedy angle that is dark and complex, and there's also moments which is which are full of exhilaration, and as well as the moments of despair. Mm-hmm. And it, it, when we were rehearsing yesterday, you know, when I see you lying on the floor and people are just walking past you, that also, you know, indicates to me that we can tell the story of a life and especially in this story we're telling the story of four mm-hmm. lives yeah. of, of your four lives as a character <laughs> and yet the, the thing that binds them all together is the thing that binds the complexity of you together mm-hmm. and to see that reflected in a theatrical performance I think it's marvellous <laughs> <laughs> thank you it's, it's very very much my pleasure <laughs> it's, it's uh, I had a lot of pleasure yesterday watching um what so many of you were doing and um, I don't think I've ever felt quite so good about something. It's not perfect and I wish we had more time to develop it and you always wish for these things in any uh, production situation but there is something um, that is very meaningful about what we've we've done Mm -hmm. and the best part of it is that it's going to be just wonderfully entertaining whatever level you come in to watch and listen to it to I think you're going to be really well served but if there's that thing within you which is open to another whole you know hum that maybe only dogs can hear um, there's there's also going to be something that's going to be kind of shattering about the experience Mm -hmm. in the best possible way yeah well thank you so much for doing this interview and uh Thank you for watching. Please come to the production of Tales of Hoffman, which will be at the Sturmfilm Kino Delphi in Prenzlauerberg on the 20th and the 21st of this month. Uh, check us out on Facebook. And see you later. Ciao.